it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having uh, a great Saturday, a great start to your weekend. Um, not going to be long, uh, but I definitely need to jump on uh, the misunderstanding and all the stuff that's floating around about this movie they cloned Tyrone. It stars Damon Fox, produced by Damon Jamie Fox. Uh, look, if you believe in the work that we do and we continue to do in so many different areas within the black community, look in the description box and see how you can support the work we do. And please show your love and support. Okay, um, there are a lot of people who do get it. So I am not coming from a place of being condescending, but I do want to bring some clarity because the the power of this movie is in the clarity and the understanding and hopefully a shifting a shift in thinking, a shift in paradigms about how we see things. Uh, I think it's genius. Whoever uh, uh, came up with the uh, the idea, the theme, uh, definitely it's genius because it has power. Um, but I want to dispel a, a couple of quick myths. This movie has nothing to do with what's going on with Jamie Foxx. Uh, for the people who are looking at a picture of Jamie before his health complications and uh, how he looked when he came on the video and saying, okay, uh, there, the body responds in a lot of different ways and I can't get into it because it would take up the entire thing. The body responds in a lot of different ways uh, to trauma and that's external and internal trauma, the type of illness and the type of uh, health incident that he experienced was extremely traumatic to the body, to the brain, and it triggered some things uh, on a chemical level, on a uh, neurotransmitter level, on a uh, uh, hormonal level, and a bunch of other things that will produce what you saw. It's not uncommon. You see it all the time when people have been sick for a while. Uh, so, but this has nothing to do, this movie has nothing to do with Jamie Foxx being cloned. So, I'm going to break it down to you real briefly and I'm going to give you the theme right off the top. The clone, or the clone is the black community, individually and collectively. And Tyrone is a semantic symbol of the stereotypes pushed in the black community so every time you mimic the behavior of the stereotype you become a replica a replica of the stereotype a clone uh when you mimic drug uh dealing when you mimic gunplay when you mimic poor buying decisions when you mimic all of these you reproduce over and over the same thing and so what they have been exceptionally good at is creating a mindset within the black community that continuously creates behavior that drives down the price, uh, drives down the property value, uh, drives down the level of safety in the community, ensuring that there will not be an influx of whites into the community, which then allows them to be able to consistently test all their theories on uh, mind control, test all their theories on how they can systematically replicate uh, year after year, the same results, the same type of behavior that fills their prisons, uh, that lines their pockets, uh, that does so much. So when you are hearing they clone Tyrone, Tyrone is a semantic symbol for the stereotypical uh, presentation of black men and black women and how we behave, how we act, how we carry ourselves, the decisions we make, the things we place value in. And it is done in a way that it presents this idea that that's what's up. So, you know, there's value in brandishing guns and doing stupid stuff that ends up costing you your freedom. There is value in pushing a bend, even if you have to do something illegal to get it. Uh, and it. And it shows in the fact that we out spend in the purchase of luxury vehicles, specifically Mercedes-Benz. We buy two to one to whites while they have eight times more wealth than we do. Medial household, median household wealth. So then when we talk about cloning there, we've got to stop. And here's the thing. 
one of the things that I think is the biggest problem, and I've said this before, and if you look at my books, that I've never called it cloning, but you'll look at me and say, hey, look, we are constantly becoming what they're engineering. They have engineered us into the last and lowest place on the socioeconomic ladder. And our behavior and our compliance to the conditioning and to the programming, it's what's keeping us there. We are literally, by our acquiescence to the programming and the replication or the mimicking of the behavior, becoming the replicas of the stereotype, which in essence is a clone. So here's where my pro well, I think a big part of the problem is though. The big part of the problem isn't in what's happening in the community, it's what's happening in the minds. It's what's happening in the minds um, and the behaviors of those of us who are able to see it those of us who can look at it and see what's going on, those of us who have an understanding of what's happening, those of us who are doing a little bit better than average, and looking back in the community and talking about how ridiculous it is, looking back in the community and talking about how stupid it is, looking back in the community and looking down on those who are doing this, everything from the wearing of the so-called bonnets, by the way, those aren't bonnets. I grew up in the household where the, the, the man of the house was born in 1909 and the lady of the house was born in 1917. I've seen a real bonnet. Bonnets are meant to be worn out. They are part of an accessory to the dress that the women wore. Those are shop, Those are glorified shower caps or hair, hair keepers. Those are meant to put your hair in while you're around the house so that you can sleep in it and not uh, disturb it as much and it'll be easier to manage and comb. But I digress. Uh, anyway, so all of that stuff that we like to talk about, that we like to ridicule, that we like to uh, address, because again, it makes us feel better about where we are, what we've done, and how we are carrying ourselves, and how we're doing better when the truth of the matter is we've actually failed because they were our responsibility. To look at the people in the neighborhood, to look at the people in the hood, and see their behavior and not understanding that their behavior is a reflection of their uh, systemic awareness or their systemic intelligence and that they are literally perpetuating a behavior that's been programmed into them and they cannot understand that they're moving wrong because the program tells them this is what they're supposed to be doing and not be able to see that is the equivalent of leaving your eight-year-old at, at the house and say, look, I'm going away for a couple of months. Here's the bills, pay the bills, pay the car note, uh, make the groceries and do all this and then to return only to find out that everything has gone to shit and then to ridicule the kid for doing it. It's the same idea of thing because they're adults because they've grown old in that situation does not mean that they've matured in understanding, that they've matured in wisdom and awareness. Those of us who get it are supposed to be the ones that are stepping out there and actually saying, I'm gonna put some feet up, I'm gonna put some feet on the ground. I'm going to develop some policies, some programs, some protocols, some strategies, some blueprints. I'm going to develop a collective movement um, as black men and women who are going to go into these communities. And I'm telling you, no, uh, you saw what happened. I mean, I'm not in the hood, but the hood came to me. And uh, when they moved in, I knew, knew we talked about this earlier this week. For those who don't know, my neighbor, my 15 year old neighbor got shot. Uh, at the same time uh, that my neighbor got shot, the guy, the young kid who shot him shot up my truck. Uh, that right here, this was all shattered. If you've seen the pictures, uh, go look. There, there's a video with it. But um, this was shot. If I would have been in the truck, I probably would have been hit in the head. But I witnessed this whole thing. And what broke my heart is I saw the very kids that I'm trying to help and understanding just how they're programmed uh, and how we're dealing with an identity crisis, how we don't know who we are, how so much energy, effort, and money is spent into keeping us ignorant of who we are because as if we're ignorant of who we are, we're constantly looking and searching naturally, subconsciously searching for who we are. We're trying to find out who we are and they tell us who we are. They tell us what will give us status, what will give us not notability, what will give us, and even if it means, we, we're seeing this uh, with this young girl, Carly, uh, Carly Russell. Now, I, I, I do think that there are some things that's not quite right uh, but 
definitely she knows what she was doing. She made a conscious decision to do it. And just by her smiling and her mugshot tells me that she's happy with being acknowledged. She, she doesn't realize yet the cost of her notoriety. She doesn't realize that long after her legal problems are over, she still is going to be paying for this. And that's because there's this thing out there. There's this thing out there that tells you, hey, what you want is to be known what you want. And, 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 and that, that, there's no real true. There's no real true value in popularity unless you find a way to leverage it monetize it and then use what you do in monetizing it to make a better life for yourself and the people you love just being popular just being like means absolutely nothing what are you going to do with it what are you going to do it and the thing is i would rather be respected than popular i would rather be respected than liked i would rather be respected than viewed as somebody that everyone knows i've been at a time and phase in my life where i walked into places people knew i was i kept the party lit i kept everything going i could go to different cities I could even go in different places around the world outside of the U.S. And um, at one point, it was legendary, man. We did some things. We st and I look at the people now as we've grown older and we've moved into our own selves and we've matured uh, and we're all doing our things. And I think we all did well. But here's the thing. That popularity comes with absolutely nothing because when shit hit the fan and everything crane came crumbling down, all those people who showed up when I was buying the bar, nobody had my back. They got ghosts real quick because it wasn't me. It was just a place to be to say that they were around something that other people knew. And so here's the thing. My challenge is it's time to stand up. It's time to take on the responsibility of whom much is given much is required uh, we weren't we're not here to lord our uh, success at whatever level everybody's doing things on different levels uh, over those who haven't reached the level we've reached Malcolm told us that be very careful how you handle the people who don't know what you know because at one point you didn't and I, I try to live by that. I try to love on people. And even the kids that all that stuff that happened earlier this week um, in my community, that I'm still trying to love on those kids. Why? Because they are only acting out the programming. And we are allowing the programming. We have a responsibility to it. It's easy to escape it and say, leave it to itself. But we can't leave them to it and ever expect the black collective because the vast majority of the black collective is in the hood. We are the closest to the poverty line in uh, proximity and numbers than, than, than any other group, right? any other non-significant group right now. We're talking about a household median income, I mean a household median wealth of 17,000 versus 177, almost 180,000. In for the whites and Asians are right at 100 and closing the gap on whites. Uh, they already have the highest earning median Asians in this nation. People are making moves, even the Latinos, especially those from south of the border, are coming in and building companies, building enclaves, setting up communities, and advancing. And we are slowly being replaced by the Latino community. And I've been warning about that for the longest and we will champion the causes because we are just built for that. We, they, they will literally use us to fight battles for something that will ultimately destroy us and we'll do it because it's just how we're built. We're fighting on morality instead of political power. And until we learn that, we are going to consistently find ourselves in last place and in detriment. So again, this whole thing about cloning Tyrone, Tyrone is the semantic symbol of every negative stereotype in the ghetto. And the clone is every person who practices behavior that allows them to replicate the semantic symbol or the stereotype. When you become one, of, when you become a stereotype that already existed, you have been cloned. When you shoot your brother, you've been cloned. When 
you you go out and you don't carry yourself in a way that's respectful and i'm not saying that you've got to meet the eurocentric idea of what is i'm not with that but i'm saying that should be a, a unilateral universal not a unilateral a universal understanding of how we're going to carry ourselves in public not because of them but because of how we want to look and, and, and have a certain level of respect for ourselves every time that you sit up and don't take advantage of business opportunities you replicate a stereotype and you become a clone every time you go out and buy something you can't afford so that you can impress someone you don't even like you are replicating a stereotype making you a clone and i can go on and on and on we have to stop the cloning process by stopping the behavior that allows us to become replicas of what we should not be uh perpetuating in the first place on that note look i'm gonna get ready to get out of here but i just had to drop that on you and i may come back and i may give a little bit of uh more deeper insight to it there's going to be a whole lot more content coming uh in the way of business in the way of community engagement in the way of opportunity so stay tuned get in where you fit in uh this is a time of change this is a time of massive pivotal shifts in economics on a global scale uh business opportunities on a global scale and the entire job mark market is being disrupted and shifted and if you don't take advantage of the opportunities you can find yourself on the outside looking in but i'm going to do everything i can to help you guys but on that note look i'm going to get ready to get out of here you guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day <laughs>